A few days ago, I bought some strawberries, but they tasted awful. So instead of eating them, I'm gonna pull out their DNA. To get started, I first need to make a salty soap solution. So into a beaker, I added about 180 ml of water, followed by 20 milliliters of dish soap, and roughly a teaspoon of salt. After mixing it around for a bit, it should be good, and I'll temporarily put this on the side. What I need next are the strawberries, and I picked out 10 of the biggest ones. Now, I'm just going to put them all into a plastic bag, and carefully crush them. To all this strawberry goo, I now need to add the salty soap solution that I made before. It doesn't look like too much is happening, but the soap is tearing apart the cells of the strawberries and releasing the DNA. After mushing this around for a few minutes, it looks like it's ready, and the next step is to filter off all the solid stuff. This is going to take a while though, so I'll come back to it in a few hours. I ended up leaving it overnight, and now in the morning, I have this nice strawberry extract. I'm just going to go ahead and pour it all back into a beaker, and on top of it, I'll add some ice-cold isopropyl alcohol. The moment that it's added, it gets a bit cloudy, and some stringy stuff starts appearing. This is actually all the DNA, and it looks a little grosser than I expected. It feels super slimy and kind of nasty, but I think that's mostly from all the soap. Either way, it's crazy that just in my hand right here, I'm holding the genetic code of life. This is the most dangerous problem in mathematics. One that young mathematicians are warned not to waste their time on. It's a simple conjecture that not even the world's best mathematicians have been able to solve. Paul Erdős, a famous mathematician, said, Mathematics is not yet ripe enough for such questions. Here's how it works. Pick a number, any number. Seven? Good choice. Okay, we're going to apply two rules. If the number is odd, we multiply by three and add one. So three times seven is 21, plus one is 22. If the number is even, we divide by two. So 22 divided by two is 11. Now we keep applying these two rules. 11 is odd, so we multiply by 3, 33, and add 1, 34. Even, divide by 2, 17. Odd. Multiply by 3, 51, add 1, 52. Even, divide by 2, 26. Still even. Divide by 2, 13. Odd. So we multiply by 3, 39, add 1, and that's 40, which is even. So we divide by 2, 20. Divide by 2, 10. Divide by 2, 5. Odd. Multiply by 3, 15, add 1, 16, divide by 2, that's 8, and then 4, 2, and 1. Now, 1 is odd, so we multiply by 3 and add 1, which equals 4. But 4 goes to 2 goes to 1, so we're in a loop, and the lowest number is 1. Now, the conjecture is this. Every positive integer, if you apply these rules, will eventually end up in the 4, 2, 1 loop. Saturation diving is like gotta be top three craziest jobs out there. There's only 336 of these people in America. There are less saturation divers than there are NBA players. They dive up to a thousand feet deep and they live for weeks in pressurized environments. You see, one of the most dangerous parts of diving is decompressing, coming back to the surface. So some people have the crazy idea to just not decompress, to just stay down there. Their living quarters are pretty cramped, but like this would go for 1900 a month in New York, no doubt. Sometimes they'll stay in pressurized 
pressurized chambers on boats. When they finally do decompress, it can take over a week <laughs> and they breathe a gas mixed with helium down there. So they sound like Donald Duck the entire time. It's hard work. This dude's swinging a hammer. I mean, swinging a hammer underwater has got to be so hard. So these guys make like $45,000 a month and, and they deserve it. Like, like I, maybe they deserve more to be honest. Fun fact about space. In the last video, we discussed something that could kill you if it entered the solar system. In this video, we will be discussing something that could kill you from over 100,000 light years away. And what's even more horrifying is that you wouldn't even see it coming. So if you know anything about space, you know what a black hole is. It's a really dense singularity which destroys everything it touches. Horrifying, right? But how can it kill you from over 100,000 light years away? Well, I'm about to tell you how. If you've ever looked up an image of a black hole, you may have seen one with these little rays coming out of the poles. What these are, are gamma rays, which are the most dangerous wavelength on the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, but Stefan, why are gamma rays so dangerous? Let me tell you why. Gamma rays are the smallest wavelength on the entire electromagnetic spectrum, which means that they can penetrate essentially any form of matter. If you were to be hit by a gamma ray, it would penetrate your cells on the atomic level and cause ionizing disruptions, which could eventually lead to the destruction of the cell itself. And any cell that isn't completely destroyed by this process would eventually mutate into cancer. Going back to the black hole gamma ray bursts, their energy is equivalent to gathering all of the stars within a 100 million light year radius and focusing their energy into a single precise beam. If a gamma ray burst within 50,000 parsecs, which is about 163,000 light years, were to ever be directed at our planet, that beam would vaporize us at the atomic level instantly. And keep in mind that the diameter of the Milky Way galaxy is only about 105,000 light years. So any gamma ray burst directed at us within our own galaxy would kill us instantly. Something to think about is the fact that gamma rays move at the speed of light. So if one were to ever be directed at us, we would never know until it hit us. But we wouldn't know that it hit us because we would be vaporized instantly. So think about that while you're trying to fall asleep tonight. For a final time, let's see what we can find in the drains today. By the back of the lab, we found a pair of Jonah crabs. These guys weren't doing much, just eating. You can see this guy's mouth parts moving, kind of cool. But we grabbed them and we put them into the crab collection. At the next spot, it may seem like there's two Jonah crabs in here, when in actuality, this one is the molted shell of the other. So crabs and lobsters molt to grow, and this Jonah crab is no exception. Notice he is very squishy and a little bit bigger than the shell that he came out of. Soon he'll harden up and be a normal crab again. But for now, we're going to put him into the crab collection. So yeah, pretty cool. Scary ass animals you've never heard of, part two. This is the saber tooth blenny, and if it bites you, it'll inject heroin into you through its fangs. This fish is commonly kept in aquariums, but what most owners don't know is that it injects opioids into its predators in order to escape. Weirdly enough, just like those drugs, this venom works as a painkiller, and scientists are actually studying it to see if it can be useful to help humans. So next time you're getting mugged, don't try to hurt your attackers, just get them high like the Blenny does.
this is a giant lens and I am using fog to illustrate how the sunlight is focused to a point. All the energy that hits this lens funnels into that spot. So when I put a rock under it, it is rather amazing. You can see how the rock is being etched and then melts from a different angle. And as I take the light off, you can see the rock is molten and turns to obsidian.